Hi everyone. So I'm Xiong Tao. I'm a postdoc in the Advanced Bioim Center at UC Berkeley. Uh, I'm working with Dr. Guku Yupatahayuna and uh, Eric Bezik. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, my project to develop pathbed scale imaging processing tools for LASH in Mexico uh, data and also how the NERSC resources uh, helps us on our projects. So in ABC, uh, we are developing cutting edge microscope techniques, advanced imaging processing tools, and also apply them to uh, complicated uh, biological problems with collaborators from all over the world. So we have built two advanced uh, multifunctional microscopes uh, that enables faster 3D high resolution imaging. Uh, and uh, these microscopes have more than 10 imaging modalities, uh, all of them with uh, adaptive optics. And uh, these microscopes are like uh, can image um, more than 10 times faster than their predecessors. So this allows us to image more and more complicated uh, um, biological samples, like such as the whole fly brain or potentially whole mouse brain in high 3D resolutions. However, as you can see here, uh, when the data, the data sites uh, we, are we are going to get uh, will be uh, drastically increased uh, with, the, with respect to the complexity of the algorithm. Like uh, even the whole mass brain will be about two, uh, 22 petabyte scale da data, and uh, for the human brain, it will be the extra bytes scale. So this uh, will raise a uh, pr problem in the data processing because no existing softwares are available to process such large uh, scale data. So, so to resolve this uh, data problem, uh, we have developed a set of softwares uh, to enable petabyte -pet scale image processing. So this software uh, cap this software uh, is capable of using the, all the CPU and GPU hardware resources from the computing clusters. And uh, we have Im implemented the most commonly used um, uh, uh, processing tools such as geometric transformation, stitching, and deconvolution for the latest uh, microscope data. And uh, these steps are more like a scalable and efficient. So first, um, to enable the processing of the data using the whole cluster, we have first developed a generic computing framework that can take arbitrary user-defined functions. So first, the tasks will be passed into the master job function, and the master will submit work jobs and assign a task for each worker. And um, and uh, after that, the master will keep monitor the workers and also check, check the work status and uh, also the, uh, whether the tasks are finished or not. If some works are, fi are filled, it will resubmit the job until all are finished. So we extensively use this framework in our, uh, most of our EMG processing pipelines to enable scalable and efficient processing. And uh, so first, uh, we found that the I.O. speed is very critical for uh, efficient processing of the uh, large-scale data. So typically, people use the T format uh, as a primary uh, data format for the microscope images. And uh, however, we found T format is very bad for parallel write because uh, uh, each T file is a single container and it's really bad for the parallel write. So we start to like uh, migrate to our uh, new data format ZAR. So each ZAR uh, file is a folder that uh, the data will be stored as separate uh, long overlapping uh, blocks. Um, and uh, each block can be uh, read, written, or updated uh, independently. So this is uh, highly parallelizable. And uh, uh, also we found the 
most uh, like uh, traditional TIFF and uh, ZAR radar meters are uh, uh, a lot that efficient, uh, especially for the more CPUs with multiple cores. And uh, so we write our own customized uh, C or C++ code uh, uh, to enable like a parallel uh, read and write with the support, uh, support of the OpenMP. And this work uh, is mainly done by uh, my mentee, Matthew Mueller. And uh, turns out our uh, readers are more than 10 times faster than the conventional ones, and writers are in general five to eight times faster. So with the faster uh, read and writers, then we start to develop the more efficient uh, EMG processing tools. And uh, the geometric transform, the SQ and rotation are essential uh, processing steps for the light uh, microscope data uh, that to transform the raw data uh, to the real sample space for the proper visualization. And uh, uh, conventionally, these two steps uh, are usually uh, run like separately. And uh, we found this is uh, re really bad for, especially for large data, because in the uh, distilled data, usually there will be a plan plenty of empty space with the image. And uh, this is very inefficient uh, in terms of the both processing time and the memory usage. And uh, since these two steps are both map transforms, and uh, we found that they may be combined uh, together as one single um, transformation. Uh, but we need to do it smartly. For, for the three step size is small, then we can do it uh, directly with no question. However, if the three step size is large, then uh, if we do it directly, then there will be a lot of interpolation artifacts. So we first like uh, interpolate uh, between the pairs of these slices to make it as if it's taken in small steps, uh, this step size, and then we uh, uh, do the combined processing. And then in this way, it works pretty well. And uh, it turns out that uh, uh, in both ways, it will be much faster and mo much more memory efficient than the, uh, separate processing. In general, it's about uh, 10 to 20 times faster. And uh, when the data uh, become larger, then it will be uh, even more faster because uh, the separate process usually will go out of memory. And for the data that cannot fit to the memory, then we we'll have a framework to uh, split the, the data along the y-axis and then do the combined processing uh, region by region. And uh, this is also very uh, Paralyzable because we use the ZAR format and the, the different regions can be processed independently. And uh, we benchmarked the uh, processing from one terabyte to one petabyte, and it's almost linearly, linearly uh, scalable. And uh, the deconvolution is a larger important step for the processing of uh, light sheet uh, uh, images that to reconstruct the real singular from the blur raw data. And uh, typically we use the Richard Lucent deconvolution uh, for the um, assert. However, uh, Richard Lucent deconvolution uh, usually requires uh, like uh, tens or hundreds of iterations to converge. And uh, also in each iteration, it's very computing intense because several fast Fourier transform operations uh, are needed uh, for the uh, computing. And uh, to resolve the problem, we have developed a fast uh, deconvolution method that only requires two iterations to convert. So this is uh, um, uh, the core idea is to modify the back projectors in the Richard Lucent deconvolution. So in the traditional Richard Lucent deconvolution, uh, the back projector is the point spread function itself. And inspired by a recent paper that uh, uh, we found that we can turn use a winner filter um, with some modification 
to use, uh, use it as the back projector. And uh, we do this by masking the wind filter with the OTF spot to keep them more information in the OTF and also get rid of the high frequency errors. It turns out this works pretty well and uh, usually it's uh, more than 20 times faster than the traditional research and decomposition. And the uh, stitching is uh, another um, critical processing step for the last uh, images, especially for large specimen. Because uh, uh, the field of view, the microscope can take um, at one batch is limited. Uh, and for large biologic samples, it needs to be taken region by region with some overlap, and then we stitch them together in the end. And the two neighbor fast process uh, stitching of the very large data, we develop a czar based uh, stitching pipeline. So this pipeline has this major three steps. Uh, in step one, we will convert uh, the T uh, to ZAR to enable uh, parallel read and fast access. And uh, the second step is the registration because uh, usually due to the sample or staging movements, the uh, uh, overlap between adjacent tiles may be not perfect. So we need to do some uh, fine tune to optimize their relative positions between each other. So this is a registration step. And we use the normalized uh, course correlation method to register the pairwise uh, 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 cor uh, correlates between the tiles. And then finally, we use a global optimization to unify the relative shape between all tiles. After that, then we can stitch um, the separate house together, and we do this blocks by blocks. So in this way, you can see all the three steps are actually highly parallelizable because uh, we already like split them into uh, independent uh, uh, tasks. And using our generic computing frameworks, um, we can do all these, uh, three steps very efficiently. And we also benchmark the uh, process time uh, with respect to different uh, data sites from one uh, terabyte to one petabyte. And it's also almost linearly scalable. And we also compared uh, our math with uh, some of the state of art uh, uh, features for big data. And uh, our method is very efficient uh, with like uh, our fast reader and also the, this uh, fast uh, processes. It's, uh, uh, about one order of magnitude faster than the other teachers. And uh, so with all this like um, very efficient uh, tools for the processing of a very la large data, then we have to uh, apply these tools to process uh, like the imaging of the whole mouse or factory bubs. Uh, it's images uh, with uh, uh, this is mostly for the uh, study of the neural degeneration in the mouse of factory bar. And uh, this is uh, it's imaged with the neural filaments and the myelin basic proteins as the markers for the, uh, for the sample. So this is a half petabyte uh, scale data with more than 21 volumetric tiles. Uh, we process this data on the permuter because uh, it's infeasible for us to process this data uh, in our own clusters. And here, yeah, this movie shows uh, uh, the different views of the, the sample from the overall uh, view of the whole uh, effect bulb and to the uh, detailed uh, re to the some sub regions uh, for the detailed uh, information, and uh, we can see all the, like uh, very detailed information for the neural filaments and also the mal malation profiles. And uh, okay, this allows us to like uh, effectively study the, how the uh, neural 
neurofilament uh, structures uh, associated with uh, neuron de degeneration diseases. So to summarize, uh, my tools is developed for the scalable large-scale image processing from ter terabytes to petabytes. It includes the most uh, commonly used process tools for large-scale images, such as disk rotation, staging, and deconvolution. And uh, yeah, I would like to thank him, uh, my advisors, Skook and Eric, for their support and guidance, and also for the group members, uh, current and former ones, uh, for their help uh, on the on, on this project from all the aspects, aspects. especially Matthew Mueller, um, who did a great job on developing the fast MG readers and writers. And I would also like to thank the uh, funding agencies, the CZI, HHMI, the um, Love Massey Foundation, and also for the LERSC for the support of the computing resources. Yeah, thanks. Uh, please feel free to ask if there's any question.